thanks everyone for coming today. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Michael Baltos. I'm the founder and trader of orderflows.com, and today I'll be talking about getting an edge in the market with order flow analysis. And you know, today you're going to discover what I think is for many traders the missing trading piece volume. You know, people talk about indicators and they're all price-based indicators but you know you really have to also take into account volume you know volume is a very important part of trading now you know it's been said that 95 percent the percentage actually probably higher of traders out there lose money consistently and you know I, I don't know what the survey is but if you were to do a survey of how many people blow up a trading account in the first three months it, the number is probably close to 95 percent as well so you know, if so many people lose money so often, why do people keep trading or even try to learn trading? You know, there's other things I'd rather do with my time than try to figure out trading. But, um, you know, if you're successful at trading, you know, it's going to really give yourself a uh, fulfilling life and, more importantly, financial freedom. Now, I'm not saying go out there, quit your job and start trading. No, you, you should learn how to trade. So today I'm going to walk you through why traders fail and how order flow will save you how to profit from clear order flow developments in the market as they incur. And lastly, I'm going to show you a simple order flow trade setup that finds market turning points with very low risk. You know, everyone always talks about, oh, you got to take low risk trades, but they don't tell you how to find those low risk trades. So if you stick around to the end, I got a gift for you. It's my 150 page book on trading order flow for free. Now I'm not going to send it to you in the mail. I'm going to send you a, a link that you could download it from and you know you can put it on your tablet, put it on your phone and you know just read it or you know on your computer print it up and refer to it. I, I talk a lot about uh, I'll say the history of order flow but you know the reasoning why the markets move based on supply and demand. You know everyone always there's two types of traders out there. There's fundamental traders and there's technical traders but at the end of the day the market moves on supply and demand. So order flow is the exact trading method I used while trading at JP Morgan, Cargill, and other firms. So if you're not familiar with me, just briefly who I am. Again, my name is Michael Valtos. I've traded futures for you know over 20 years. Right? I was vice president of futures trading at JP Morgan for eight years, Commerce Bank in Chicago for three years, Cargill, the big commodity trading firm, for four years, EDF Man for two years. And before that, I started on the CME floor. And I don't say this, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I want you to know my background and where I'm coming from, right? I have a solid background that, you know, I, I think really puts me ahead of, you know, other people that sit there and say, you know, I figured this out on my, my own. You know, I traded with real money. This is what I did to earn a living, you know, to pay for my house, pay for my car, um, pay for everything. You know, that's what I did. You know, it wasn't a hobby to me that this was my job. This was my career. If I wasn't successful, I wouldn't have lasted as long as I did in these firms. You don't last eight years at a firm like JP Morgan unless you're good at what you're doing. And, you know, Cargill, a big commodity trading firm, you don't last that long, you know, unless you're good at what you do. And, again, I'm not saying that to brag. I just want to give you a background on myself so you understand where I'm coming from and hopefully can, you know, put some faith into what I'm trying to present to you today. Now, first I'm going to get started, a brief disclaimer before I get started. Again, you know, I want to go through this disclaimer. You know, trading is not easy, and, you know, if this turns some people away, then, you know, so be it. But, you know, if you're serious about trading, you'll understand the risks that are involved in trading. You know, this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. and should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract or make any other type of investment decision. Futures trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor. The investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that could be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Now, if you don't believe me, um, you know I'm sure you know, if you've been involved in trading long enough, you know somebody that's traded and has, has lost lost you know the trading account you know if it just ends at the trading account that's great but you see every once in a while you read a story about a bank takes a um, you know there's a rogue trader he loses you know how many hundreds of millions of dollars in some cases billions of dollars so you know while you can make very good money you can also lose money so I just want you know to know that up front but so I hope I didn't discourage anybody, but you know, that's the reality of it. That's the reality of trading. You know, you, you just, you look, you read books and all that, you watch movies, Wolf of Wall Street, you think trading is the easiest thing. It's not, it, it's actually a bit of work. And I want to show you how order flow analysis will help your trading. 
and more importantly, in the least amount of time possible. You know, how to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. I don't want you to sit there and think you got to devote five years of your life to understanding an order flow. No, I want you to get up to speed relatively quick. You know, and if you've been interested in the markets for any period of time, I'm sure you've heard of order flow. Now, some people like to tell you, oh, order flow is the newest fad in the markets. It's not. Order flow has been around for over 100 years. You know, the, the great, uh, one of the greatest trading books you know, that everybody recommends you to read is Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. Well, that guy, Jesse Livermore, he was a tape reader. And in, you know, in the old days, I say the old days, you know, back in the 1920s or so, the ticker tape, that was the order flow. Now with the advent of computers, personal computers, and you know, um, trading robots and all that, now it's referred to as order flow. But in the old days, you know, the ticker tape, that was order flow. That was the, the rudimentary form of order flow. So what order flow is not, it's not some red light, green light trading system, right? It's not something you could buy for $12 that's gonna have, you know, scalping pro, indicator the best for 15 minute time frames you know 100% profit 0% loss you know it's not the forex profit way the way to make profits in forex you know you buy when the line turns green or you know the bar turns red no it's it's not like that order flow is understanding what is going on in the market and you know order flow is the way traders orders are executed in the market when they're transacted you know, when they're flowing into the market and trade hence the term order flow so you know, you have your trading front end up and you place an order. You either join the bid or you buy the offer or you sell the bid, sell at the market or, you know, join the offer. So each, you know, however way you trade is reflected in the order flow chart. Whether you trade on the bid or you trade on the offer, it's gonna show up on an order flow chart. And, you know, over time, the chart develops and you get a clear picture of the market and you know while it looks intimidating it's actually very not it's got a lot of information but there's three things to really concentrate on especially if you're new to order flow point of control delta and imbalances point of control is the level in a bar with the most volume and on an order flow chart it's going to have a rectangle around it this black rectangle each bar has a rectangle that's the point of control that's the area in the bar with the most volume the delta usually runs along the bottom. And what it is, it's a difference between aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers in the bar. Okay, I'll get to that later when I talk about aggressive buying and aggressive selling. And imbalances, now you'll notice in a bar, there's different color price levels, volume numbers. And if it's black number in the bar, that's just your normal volume that's traded. However, if it's a red number, that's a selling imbalance. It's what's called selling imbalance. If it's a blue number in the bar, that's a buying imbalance. And what you're doing is you're comparing the price traded on the bid versus the price traded on the offer. So for example, this bar here, um, where it says 415.9 in the blue number above the bar, you have seven lots traded on the offer versus 1277 traded on the bid. You have a red number, so it's indicating that you have a selling imbalance because what it does, you're comparing the volume traded on the bid against the volume traded on the offer, and it's above, if it's above a certain percentage, usually the industry standard is four to one, so if it's four times more volume either on the bid or the offer, you'll have an imbalance. In this case, obviously, 1277 is more than four times greater than seven, so you have a sign of balance. Down at the bottom of the bar, you have a blue number, 5902. When you compare it diagonally to the bid, you have 1099 traded on the bid, versus 5902 traded on the offer. You're comparing the bid against the offer. You're not comparing it horizontally. You're comparing it diagonally because the market's a two-way auction. There's a bid, there's an offer. And if it's more than four to one, in this case, it's more than four to one on the offer side, you have a buying the balance because aggressive, you know, there was four times as many buyers as there were sellers when the price was uh, 30 bid at 30 and a quarter. Okay, so that's, those, that's an imbalance. Now, full disclosure, you know, we'll be talking about order flow on a chart on software that I helped develop, okay? I didn't develop the footprint chart, rather I developed um, some of these other tools that I'll be talking about. So, you know, there. if you're not familiar with order flow, this is what an order flow chart looks like. So, you know, a question I get asked once in a while, is order flow analysis technical or fundamental analysis? Well, honestly, it's neither, but it's both. Uh, that doesn't make sense, but 
what it is is actually order flow reads the market psychology, the net buying, the net selling, aggressive buying, aggressive selling, and basically the sentiment of the market participants. So, you know, whether the people are trading with technical analysis or fundamental analysis, it's reflected in the order flow. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a little cough here. So how can order flow trading help you? Well, order flow is a skill set, right, that once you learn it and internalize it, trading becomes second nature because you'll be anticipating what can happen in the market based on what's currently happening in the market right now. So what does that mean? You know, so internalize it. Well, it's like driving. When you learn how to drive, right, you start by watching videos. You read a book. I'm from Illinois. The book that you read in, in driver's ed classes, rules of the road, you know, all the traffic laws and what the signs mean. But once you start driving, you internalize what you've learned about traffic, you know, how to drive the car, you internalize it. So when you're in traffic, you can anticipate what you, what's going to happen, you know, in the sense that, you know, if a car cuts in front of you, should you veer off to the side or should you slow down or do whatever? Someone, you see someone standing on the side of the street, they're going to jump out, you know, you know how to react. Right? You don't have to sit there and refer back to, um, you know, your book or, you know, your, your lessons. You know already what to do. And once you internalize order flow, that's how trading becomes. You can almost anticipate where you think the market's going to go next based on what's happening right now. Right? You're trading in the now. You're not trading in the past. So if you can have the most recent information put right in front of you and you know how to read it, you can really anticipate, almost anticipate, what's going to happen next in the market. So. Some of the things, you know, the benefits of order flow is, you know, it makes it easy to find hidden strength and weakness in the market. Determine if highs or lows are going to hold. You know, every time you hit a high or a low, you should be asking yourself, you know, is this high going to hold or is it going to keep going higher? You know, is this low going to hold? Is this going to be the low of the day or is are we going to go lower? You're going to see market generated support and resistance levels and you can determine if price is being rejected. You know, again, you know, anytime you're at a high or low, you should be asking, you know, is price being accepted up here or is it being rejected? And much more. I don't have time to get into it. Honestly, I wish I did. It would be this 45-minute presentation would be about four hours. But um, you know, I'm going to try and cover as much as possible. And this information is not available on a normal bar chart. So you know, I left J.P. Morgan in 2008, and I was trading. And you know, honestly, um, you know, when you're trading for yourself, it's a bit different than when you're trading for a firm. You know, you don't have the resources available. And you know, I was using an order flow chart, but I didn't, it didn't really do everything that I needed it to do in the sense that, um, you know, I wanted some of my analysis to be put into um, into the charting software. And, you know, as opposed to myself doing it by hand or, you know, doing calculations by hand and, and things like that because it really limits you on how many markets you can trade. I'm not saying you got to go trade eight markets, but, you know, if you're looking at two or three markets, you know, on, on different, you know, types of charts, range charts and minute charts, you know, any way you can automate, let's say automate it, but, you know, make a tool to make it a little bit easier on yourself and take some of the analysis off of your shoulders and just automate it, then it's going to be great. So one of the things that I created and I had program put in my software was called what I call ratios. And basically what it does, ratios help you determine if price levels are being rejected or defended. Now, there's two types of ratios. There's the ratio bounds high, which indicates price rejection. And a ratio balance low, which indicates price defense and how it looks on an order flow chart. This is my order flow traders software generated chart. Now you'll see there's numbers below green candles, you know, up bars, and numbers above down bars, red candles. And doji bars have no um, no ratio. I, I personally I feel in, in all my years of analysis that you know doji candles. I'm not a candlestick trader, but as far as order flow goes, I find them kind of neutral. One way or the other, they could go either way. So I, I just sort of treat them as neutral. That's why I don't have ratios above or below it. Now, there's two colors of ratios. There's blue and there's black. The black ratio is just your normal order flow. Your typical ratio means, you know, a black number just means, you know, the market's doing what it's supposed to do. It's facilitating trade. Now, if there's a blue ratio, if it's a ratio bounds high, high or a ratio bounds low, it'll, it appears blue. And it's going to indicate, you know, something important. You know, 
say, hey, pay attention, you know, sit up and, and take a look at the chart and analyze what's going on because it's going to tell you if there's price rejection or price support. So you got price rejection at this high, you came off, came down to a level of price support, and then the market moves back up. So why are these important? Why are ratios important? It's because, like I said, you know, when you hit a high or a low, a swing high or a swing low, you want to ask yourself, is there price acceptance or price rejection? If there's price rejection, oftentimes the market will move. Uh, you know, it'll come off from the high or come off from the low. And, you know, whether it's price rejection or price defense, again, it'll move. So here, this is your high of the day. You've got price rejection and you sell off all the way down to almost your low of the day. You want to get above your low of the day. And you got quite signs of price rejection in the order flow down here and the market starts to move up. You know, here's another example. We came off from our high of the day. We get down one tick off the low. You got a ratio bounds low indicating price defense down here. You could just see the volumes down here, you know, 500, 243, 400. You got a ratio bounds low, which indicates price support. And then the market rallied. It rallied back up, almost back up to the high. You know, these, these um, examples, they only appear literally almost every day in every market. You know, I, I do almost daily YouTube videos, market recaps. If, if you're not on YouTube, you know, you should subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's just, you know, it's YouTube slash order flows or something. I, I believe it, but if you search order flows, you'll find it. You know, I talk about the same handful of markets, you know, bonds, five years, S&Ps, euro currency, um, crude oil, soybeans. And it's like literally day in, day out. I feel like I repeat myself. I say, you know, here we sold off from the high where you had a ratio and the divergence that's down to a low where you got another bullish ratio and you rally back up. And, and literally these things appear every day and almost on, I'll say every type of chart, but you know, order flow is really meant for short-term trading. If you're trading with something like a 30 minute chart, order flow is probably not gonna be very effective. It's, I find it most effective. Um, you know, when you're down into uh, trading with range bars or, um, you know, sub 10 minute charts. But again, you know, this is, you know, the power of order flow. And, and these are tools that I've had programmed into my footprint chart. So it just makes, you know, the order flow analysis a bit easier. You know, because you're not going to be living and dying on every tick inside the footprint chart as you would if you're looking at a dome. You know, you're living and dying by every single tick and every order that comes in, you know, order flow footprint chart really allows you to take a step back and analyze the market and see what's going on in the market and make a good trading decision rather than a uh, you know a, a rushed trading decision because you know you'd live in if you're trading a dome you're really you know you're cardiac trading I use the term cardiac trading you know, the cardiac kid you're living and dying by you know every single tick that goes through and nobody wants that stress you know there's enough stress in life and you don't want to start trading and add stress to your life Another thing I wanted the software to do was to highlight areas to me where traders are trapped in a position. You know, you hear the term trap traders, you know, traders are trapped. And really what it is, is the best way to describe it is traders who are late to the party. You know, they get in at the ends of the moves. We've all been there. We all buy the high. We all buy at the market and we get filled at the high and the market, damn it, just turns and reverses right on you and you're stuck there at the high. You're long at the high and the market is selling off. You got to get out. You're taking too much heat. You got to get out. And conversely, at the low, we will, you know, you sell the low, you think the market's going to go lower, and it doesn't. It just stops right where you sold it. You sold, congratulations, you made print, as they say, because that low is going to print in the news. Well, you won't have newspapers anymore, but in the old days, you'd say you made print. It means you sold the higher, you bought the higher, you sold the low. And, you know, the market just reverses on you. And what that means is, you know, you're trapped, right? You, you bought the high. You got to get out of that position because, you know, you're not going to just keep taking the loss, right? You want to cut your loss. So you got to get out of that position, you're trapped. And you know, on a normal bar chart, you're not going to see when you know traders are stuck on a position. But on an order flow chart, you can, you can see that. And you know, one of the things that I wanted the chart to tell me, you know, because I said, you know, I don't want to just look at one market. I want to look at a few different markets on, on different screens. You know, nowadays you could buy a monitor for you know a hundred bucks, a nice 23 inch monitor um, on Amazon. So you know you, Computing power is, is amazing these days. So, you know, I, I don't have tons of screens, but I, I literally know guys that have like a whole wall full of screens, and I don't know how they look at it. But, um, you know, me, I, I just like to look at a handful of markets. But what the software will do is it'll draw a red arrow if I think there's trap traders at a high, or a green arrow if I think there's trap traders at a low. So here you got trap traders 
literally at the high of the day, you know, it will also tell you if there's, you know, a swing high. And, you know, you got a nice move down. So, you know, you had a lot of buyers going up here, buying things in this market is going to go higher. All of a sudden, they realize they're stuck. You know, the market's not going higher. And then the market sells off. You know, there is an example of a low. You know, the market's powering down through these new lows. You got very strong selling. It's all, you know, people just hitting the bids, wiping out the lows, taking them out. Stops going off. You get down to this low. The last few people came in, sold the low, thinking we're going lower. And damn it, the market turned around on them and started ramping. But, you know, this green arrow here, not this blue one, this green one, it's a little bit hard to see. But, you know, this is a sign telling me that traders are trapped down here. And you can see the market starts rallying. You know, it doesn't just say, you know, this particular group of traders is trapped, but it also helps you find turning points in the market. You know, a move could be overextended and, you know, is, is due for a reversal. So if you're looking at a normal bar chart, this is just your normal candlestick chart. You don't have any idea that, you know, you got traders trapped down here at this low of the day that, you know, hey, this could be, this is a very bullish signal. You just see this green candle, okay. You know, you can't make heads or tails. You know, you got lots of candles that look just like it. You know, the market didn't really do much afterwards. And here you got a nice move up. But if you're looking at an order flow chart, and it's hard, it's hard to see this green arrow down here, but there is a green arrow. It's telling me the traders are trapped. You see a lot of people came in and sold down here at this low. 1,750 lots traded down here at this low. Why aren't we going any lower? Again, you know, internalize what's happening. You should be asking yourself, we're at this low. A lot of people sold it, yet we're not going any lower. You know, that, that's, that's something that just screams out to you if you're an order flow trader. And what happens is the market rallies back up and all of a sudden all these people you know, 1,700 lots traded down here. People selling into this bid. There's a good buyer down here supporting the market as well. But, you know, more importantly, all these people that thought we're trying to finally we're breaking out of this, you know, breaking out into new lows, it doesn't. And then you know, all these people that sold down here are going to be buying it on the way back up. You know, unless they're going to take a, a big loss, you know, and then wait for it to come back. You know, it might later and it might not, you know, but the good traders, you know, they're going to, you know, everyone says cut your losses short, you know. Good traders cut their losses short and they're getting out, you know, at the least amount of loss as possible. They're still going to take a loss, but, you know, would you rather get out, you know, down here as opposed to up here? Of course, you'd rather get out lower, take your losses, keep it as small as possible. <laughs> so, again, let me ask you a question. I sort of answered this earlier. What do you think moves the markets? Fundamental analysis or technical analysis? Well, really, it's the big players. And I'll let you know a secret because I've been a big player who is – they use both technical analysis and fundamental analysis. You know, the big, the big players have access to the best information out there. And who are the big players? Well, it's the big commodity trading firms. You know, the big, uh, you know, whether it's the oil trading companies. You know, literally, when I mean oil trading companies, I mean the, the physical trading companies. You know, the people that have the wells and, you know, they're shipping oil all over the world. Whether oil, you could say it's grains. You know, all the big different commodity trading firms, these people have the best information available, information that, you know, is literally, they, they, they have this information that's, you know, they're privy to it, you know, hours before it hits the free world, you know. And another big player is, is the asset managers and the real money accounts. You don't hear so much of these people because these are really long-term traders, asset managers and real money accounts, the sovereign wealth funds, the pension funds, you know, people that, you, know, you hear about hedge funds. You know, hedge funds got five billion, six billion now. That's considered big. You know, maybe a big one's twenty billion. But asset managers, you're, you're talking hundreds of billions of dollars. Well, sovereign wealth funds, um, central banks, it's hundreds of billions of dollars. You know, they don't make the news that much. You know, you don't really hear much about it. But they, trust me, they're very active in the market. And then you know, the hedge fund portfolio managers. You know, you may hear about hedge funds got you know, ten billion under management. But you got different portfolio managers, and they're only you know. Each one is managing a portion of it. So, you know, you hear of, you know, XYZ hedge fund at 10 billion under management, but really, you know, they got, you know, 10 different portfolio managers. Each manager is only managing, you know, maybe half a billion dollars. So it's not like one person is controlling 10 billion. And when these players, you know, when they act in the market, they cause what's called imbalances in the market. And what is an imbalance is, well, you know, you hear the term, um, you know, in the old days, people would say, well, the market went up because there's more buyers and sellers. That's bullshit. What you have is actually more aggressive buyers and sellers. And 
because they're basically buying everything on the way up, they're being more aggressive than the sellers. You know, the reason the market's moving up is because there's less sellers than buyers. So, yeah, I mean, even though I said there's more buying, uh, less buyers than sellers, what I mean is there's less aggressive sellers, people selling to keep the market down. They're not equal. So imbalances occur when one side, either the buyers or sellers, become aggressive and dominate the other side. So basically when a buyer, a trader buys at the market, basically lifts the offer, that's being aggressive. Or if a trader sells the market, hits the bid, he's being aggressive. If you sit on the bid, try to buy it, and you're sitting on a bid as a limit order, you're not aggressive. You're waiting for the market to come to you. You're being passive. If you're working an offer, you're trying to sell it by joining the offer, you're being a passive seller. You're waiting for the market to come for you. But if you were to all of a sudden change your mind and say, hey, I, want, I think this market's going lower, you move your offer down and hit the bid, then you're being aggressive. And a market imbalance occurs when there are at least four times more aggressive traders on either the bid or the offer. So again, you have a selling imbalance if you get volume traded on the bid four times greater than what's traded on the offer. I'll show you in a second. Or you get a buying imbalance if four times more volume trade on the offer than what's traded on the bid. Now this information appears on an order flow footprint chart. It doesn't appear on a bar chart. Again, you know, if you're looking at a bar chart, this is what a bar chart looks like. You don't see the volume. But if you're looking at an order flow chart, you see the volume. So Taking imbalances a step further, right? Remember I said an imbalance occurs when there's four times greater volume traded on the offer for a buying imbalance or four times greater volume traded on the bid against the offer. As you see here, this red 14.50 is a selling imbalance against 68. Now, what you have in order flow is you have this thing called stacked imbalances, right? And stacked imbalances are when you have three or more imbalances stacked on top of each other. That's what's called a stacked imbalance. So you have a stacked buying imbalance when there are three or more buying imbalances stacked on top of each other. You have a stacked selling imbalance when there are three or more selling imbalances stacked on each other. Why is that important? Well, depending on where it appears, right? Again, you should always take trading in context of the market. Where are we trading relative to a reference level, a high of the day, a low of the day, swing high or swing low, you know, previous days high, previous days low. In this case, this red line here is the low of the day. You're coming in, making new lows, making new lows. All of a sudden, you're at your low, and you got aggressive buying coming in. You got a stack buying imbalance. That's a very bullish sign that this market can go higher, and it does. You know, it just starts gradually creeping back up. You know, there's no reason to be selling it down here. It just keeps going higher. You got aggressive buying coming in. You know, these are you know I hate to call them slam dunk, slam dunk trades, but you know this is really you know order flow at its best. You know, I mean. The market is telling you right here, right now, that hey, we got very aggressive buying coming in. You, know, you should act on it, and if you do, you're you're rewarded. You know, another case. You know, here's a market that's going up. It hits the high, starts selling off. Well, on the way up, you have all these blue numbers. You got a lot of buying imbalances. You hit your high, you got a selling imbalance right off the high. So you just had this move up. It was a demand-driven market. You know, aggressive buying. All of a sudden, you hit this high, you start coming off. Got a couple, you know, selling imbalance right off the high, and then two bars later, you got another selling imbalance, and boom, you got a stack selling imbalance. Market is telling you, information is there. It's telling you, hey, aggressive sellers are coming in right now. You know, whether it's people that had bought it on the way up, you know, they, they want to take profits, it doesn't matter. What the market is telling you is that you have aggressive selling happening here. This high is probably going to hold, and you're going to go lower, right? You don't have to wait till the market sells off all the way, you know, 10 points lower. It's telling you right here, just off this high, that the market is experiencing a lot of selling coming in. Now, I'm not trying to pick highs or lows. No, rather what I'm doing is waiting for the market to tell me something. You know, it can tell me nothing. Oftentimes it doesn't. You know, the market exists to facilitate trade, to transfer risk from one party to another. But there are times when the market reveals itself. And you know, stacked imbalances is a perfect example of when the market reveals itself. So again, you know, if you're looking at a bar chart, whether it's a candlestick chart or bar chart, how can you determine what the big players are doing? Everyone says you got to follow the smart money. They know what they're doing. But if you're looking at a bar chart, how do you know what they're doing? You don't because you don't have the volume in it. But if you're looking at a volume footprint chart, you see the volume that's being traded on the bid and the offer. This is that low here, B, right here, right? A and B, they look exactly alike. B worked. A didn't. A started to, then it fell off. B 
be work, nice trade. What, you know, what can the market tell you? It's telling you here, you got a stacked imbalance just off this low. You got a ratio balance low indicates it's very supportive buying, stopping volume in the market to stop this move lower. But then more importantly, you got this stacked buying imbalance. So again, you're coming down here, strong selling. You got a lot of imbalances, imbalance in each bar practically. And you make the new low. Also, order flow is telling you, hey, you got a ratio balance low. It's indicating stopping volume. Maybe you're not convinced yet. You're not sold. Nah, I'm not sure this is going to be the low. You know, wait for the next bar. Also, you have a nice, you have a ratio, a ratio balance low as well. But more importantly, you got a stacked imbalance. It's telling you aggressive buyers are coming into this market. They're coming in strong. And the market rallies. You know, you don't need to wait for the market to rally before you get in. You get in as soon as the market tips its hand right in these two bars. Now, you know, another benefit of order flow is in case, you know, you've ever wondered why a market pulls back to a particular level, well, you know, order flow sometimes can reveal that to you. So, you know, you see how this market is going up, makes its high, pulls back, and then shoots higher. Well, why does it pull back to this level? Well, if you look at this, you can see the imbalances, but, you know, if you put on, you know, I have this thing where you can display the imbalance, what I call a zone. So when you have a stacked imbalance, it'll draw a zone out. You pick how many bars you want it to appear, you know, five, six, seven, or not appear. But, you know, you can see how this moved. The market was going up. It pulled back. It pulled, it pulled back. It pulled back right into this area where you have the aggressive buying initially. And then, you know, there's not enough selling to move it lower. Buying takes over, and we start rallying back again. And even here, even this little move, right? We're working our way back up. We make a new high, this high here. In this bar with a ratio of 12.29 is one tick higher than this previous bar of 14.29, uh, sorry, 0.1429. Then it comes back. Where does it come back? It comes back into this area where you have the aggressive buying, and aggressive buying reappears at that same level, and the market goes higher. Again, you know, this is really the benefit of order flow. You know, it's telling you this, it's showing you this stuff that again, you're not going to see on a normal bar chart. You're not going to see this information on a bar chart. You know, I sound like I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, but you know, really, you know, if if you're not using this information, you just put yourself at a disadvantage over people that are using this information. So, you know, earlier in this presentation, you know, I promised you a simple order flow trade setup that finds market turning points at very low risk. Now, this is one of my favorite trading setups, and it appears daily in most markets. Sometimes it appears more than once. It's very successful, you know, and you know, sometimes. It may appear, may not appear, um, you know, may not appear for one day, the next day it shows up three times. Um, you know, you can only trade what the market gives to you. Now, you know, the reason why I'm sharing this is it's my goal is I want to make order flow trading easier for you, right? I want to show you, um, you know, what works, right? I, I want to share these setups with you so you know what to look for in the order flow. You know, there's no point in you trading order flow if you don't know what to look for. It's, it's pointless, right? But, you know, that's why I do these presentations with investor inspiration. That's why I, I you know, I have a YouTube channel, so I write you know, these blog posts. Because I want to get this out, this information that I think is, you know, valuable for traders. You know, I, I hate for people, you know, I hate hearing stories of people losing money. You know, I got a lot of friends that trade. You know, even before I got into this business, you know, I got a lot of friends that trade stocks. You know, some were successful, some weren't. You know, everyone had their own way of trading. You know, you, there's seven speakers today. Each speaker today in this, on this panel, each one has their own way of trading. You know, is one way right better than the other? No, not necessarily. You know, each trader. You have to find what works for you, and order flow works for me, and I'm sure it will. I know it will work for other people because I've trained people on how to trade with order flow, and you know, really they've turned the corner and you know are successful at trading. So yesterday, this is in the Nasdaq, mini Nasdaq NQ, and you had the swing high here. You know, if you're a pure technical analyst, you'll say, well, you got a head and shoulders here. You should be selling here at B. Well, what if I could tell you? What if I could show you a way? that would give you a better entry, where would you rather sell? Down here at point B or up here at point A? You know, just right off this high rather than after you sell off. You know, point A is gonna be best because where is you gonna stop gonna be? It's just gonna be right behind this high here. You know, so you're gonna just be risking this little bar. You know, basically this, this one bar is your risk, you know, for all of this, as opposed to, you know, from 5610 down to 5600, where you're getting short, you know, you got all this risk. You know, would you rather be getting short at 5608 with a stop at 5610 as opposed to getting short at 5600 with a stop at 5610? No, you'd rather choose the low risk one. So, you know, again, a bar point of control is one of the building blocks of order flow. 
and it's the price level in a bar with the most volume. It could appear at any point in the bar, but there's times when it appears at a particular level that often indicate a turning point. So again, this is the chart. And I blew it up a little bit so it's a little easier to see. You know, again, you got that head and shoulders formation. You know, candlestick guys will say, oh, you got a dark cloud cover here. You got to get short. Well, you had dark cloud cover here. You had it here. You had it here. And the market kept rallying. But if you look at an order flow chart, boom, going to control at the extreme, right at the high. You also have a bearish ratio, ratio pounds low, indicating stopping volume. And then the market sold off. So you'd be getting short immediately in the next bar, you know, rather than trying to figure out this head and shoulders, draw a trend line, you know, and you're getting short down here, you know, at 5,600, you're getting short right off that high. You're getting short right here immediately based off market generated information. So again, you know, point of control is extreme is, you know, you're looking for the point of control to appear at the top of down bars, red candles. So point of control at the top of a down candle or point of control at the bottom of a green candle of an up bar. Ideally, it should be at a swing high or swing low. And, you know, for a swing high for a sell, a swing low for a buy. This is what it's going to look like here. This is yesterday, right? Yesterday in the five years. Again, I talked about these markets. Every, you know, not every day it appears. Some days it does appear once or twice. Some days it doesn't. But, you know, again, you know, look for it. It doesn't take rocket science to figure this out. You don't need any mathematical formula. You just use the computer on your shoulders, your brain. You can see it right there. And the market rallied. I believe the market even went higher after this later in the day. Um, but when I was doing my presentation slides, you know, I took that screenshot right there. This is S&Ps. Boom, you're rallying back up, rallying up here. I'm going to control right at the top of the red bar. Next bar, you get short and it sells off. I mean, what, what? What, what more do you need? Again, I sound like I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. So why is point of control extreme so effective? Well, it signifies stopping volume present in the market, either in the form of supportive buying or resistant selling. Again, this information is only available on an order flow footprint chart. It doesn't appear on a normal bar chart. So by now, you should be able to see how powerful order flow analysis is. I've shown you a few examples how to use order flows. There's a lot of other ways to use order flow, but I've shown you some of the some of the ways that I use it and some of the ways that I teach it. I'm a big, big believer in keeping things simple and order flow is about as simple as it gets. You know, there was this movie in the 70s, Marathon Man, starring Dustin Hoffman, Lawrence Olivier, William Devane, you know, Mr. Buy Gold, Buy Silver. If you ever watch Fox News, I always got those ads on there, Roy Scheider from uh, Jaws. But, you know, the, the story of this, behind this movie, you know, Dustin Hoffman, right, he's reportedly stayed up 72 hours to get into character. 72 hours straight, three days he stayed up to get into character. Where for Lawrence Olivier, he heard that, you know, he's a great actor in his own right, just said, why don't you just try acting, you know? And it's the same with trading, just trade. You know, why don't you just trade rather than try to figure out, you know, some perfect combination of technical indicators, MACD, RSI. You know, you're not trading, you're just trying to find a perfect combination rather than reading what the market is telling you. So, you know, stop flushing your money down the toilet trying to find the holy grail of trading, it doesn't exist. Why don't you just learn how to trade? And again, you know, order flow is gonna help you learn how to trade. Again, you know, I've, the back story about me, I've, I've been in the future trading business for over 20 years. You know, Before I got into it, I was managing a grocery store after graduating college. The money was decent. You know, I was 21 years old, I was making 30 some thousand dollars a year. Anytime you can make more than your age, you're doing good. So, but I had to make a decision. You know, is that what I wanna do with the rest of my life? Or do I want more financial freedom? Do I want take a shot at, you know, potentially making a very good living. So I decided, you know, I want to be a trader. And how do you become a trader? Back in those days, you would go down to the trading floor and ask around for a job. I got a job, Dean Witter. I made 25 cents above minimum wage. I made $25.25 an hour. This is my second paycheck after I started down there. You can see two weeks pay period, 65 hours I worked. Um, you know, I made $341 net. Um, I worked an additional five hours as I worked, you know, I rotate, we we'll work on the S&Ps because the S&Ps were open a little bit later. It's an extra $27. So for two week period, I made $272. That's ridiculous, you know, but um, you know, that's the reality of it. You know, I made that decision. You know, is this what I want to do? You know, it may cost me a little bit. In this case, I was still young. It just cost me um, a good pain, you know, a good paying job. I don't want to say go quit your job and, you know, struggle and become a good trader, but no, you know, do you want to become a trader? Do you want to make that change in your life? You know, I made that change in my life. I still keep this paycheck up on the wall. Um, the, my very first paycheck I have uh, saved someplace else, but this one I keep on my wall and I look at it just to remind me, you know, of, of you know, where I started in this business. 
So you know, nowadays you don't have that chance. You don't can't go down the trading floor to get a job trading. Nowadays, you know, unless you go to a university and get a computer science degree, a lot of places aren't going to hire you. You know, it's unfortunate. So that's why I created what I call the order flows all in trading package. So you know, everything I talked about for the last 40 minutes would be useless if you just go back to your old habits of trading. You know, that doesn't work using technical indicators. Or maybe you know you just, you're not serious about trading. You don't want to learn order flow. Fine, you know that's that's fine. But if you want to break that habit, you know I'm here. I'm offering you that branch. You know that the the buoy, the the life preserver to get your trading to the next level. So if you're ready to add order flow analysis to your trading, you know let me know. That's what I'm here for. That's why I created the I'm all in package. I call it the all in package and. Once you understand what's happening in the market, you know, markets just make sense. You know, market's not some big convoluted thing. You know, there are times where the market makes no sense. You know, this market's just doing what it should do. It facilitates trade. But there's other times where I just showed you a lot of examples where the market really, really says, hey, look at what's happening here. You can see it, you know, trade it. And I created the order flow trader software. Again, you know, this is my software. It takes the order flow footprint chart to another level. You know, I've got a lot of indicators on there. It runs on NinjaTrader 7 or 8. I personally I prefer 7. I'm not a big fan of 8 at this point. Also, we have a Sierra Charts version. If you're interested in it, email me. I'll send you the information about it. And what it is, it's a volume footprint chart with four pre-programmed order flow analysis tools. I talked about the trap traders. I talked about the ratios. There's another two I haven't talked about. And I'll also give you my chart template so your charts can look like my charts. So you don't have to dick around trying to set up your charts to look like my charts, I give it to you so you could have it, you know, up and running as, as fast as you can. But having order flow software is not enough. Right? You have to know how to use it, know what to look for. So I throw in, I'm going to throw in as a special, I'm going to throw in the order flow trading course. Normally I sell it for $297. It's free. It's 20 lessons, 15 hours of video instruction. I'm going to also give you an order flow tool called the Delta Scalper. Normally I sell this for $250. I'm giving it to you for free. And how does it look? You know, this is the NASDAQ chart yesterday, right off this high. It also gave a sell. Yesterday, S&P's 10 range chart It's giving you a sell right here. You know, getting short at 24.20, goes all the way, trades all the way down to 24.12. Get a buy here, it goes back up to 18. Again, you know, this is, you're getting points out of the market. Forget ticks, I'm talking, you know, eight points out of the market. You know, another four points on the way back up. Not eight ticks, these are points. You know, we'd rather just be trying to trade for crumbs when you get the whole loaf, right? Um, this is five years, again, yesterday. Swing high, Delta Scalper, a nice move down, almost down to your low. So if you add all this stuff up together, normally I sell the order flows software for $899, course $297, Delta Scalper for $250. You know, that's about $1,400, $1,500. But I'm not going to charge you that. And they've even got you a special bonus. I got three additional order flow tools, which I sell for $650. I'm going to give it to you if you get on board in the next 48 hours. And this is how it looked yesterday. I didn't have time to put up today's chart. This is a mini dollar. This is just a 100 tick chart, very fast chart. You see this trade, the first one, yeah, not so good. Second one, decent. Third one, very good. Again, you know, whether you're using, you know, a minute chart, a tick chart, a range chart, you know, you could play around, you know, experiment with it. I don't know what type of charts you're using. Everybody uses their own different type of charts, Ranko charts. So, you know, you add that in, 650, that's already $2,000. I'm not going to charge you that. You know, I'm just going to charge you a single payment, 999. Sounds like a lot, but it's really, it's not. If you really want to learn order flow, you know, there's no more monthly payments or the payments in the future. Just a one-time payment. You know, people are saying, people are posting online, you know, very helpful, lots of detailed info, best order flow analysis, you know, this other guy's yet. Yeah, folks who don't see the value in what you're sharing is just simply missing the point. You know, the positives that I put on the table are massively valuable for any trader who's willing to learn trading as a career. Put it in perspective for another, you know, what else can you buy for 999? You could buy this cool, you know, folding electric bike for 999, you know, lower your carbon footprint, um, you know, save the world, or you can learn how to trade and have a better life. So, again, you know, act now, go to orderflows.com and, you know, I'll put the link in the, the chat there, slash all in. It'll take you to this page. You just scroll down to the bottom. Click join now, takes you to the PayPal page. I don't get your credit card information. And you know, just join. Now, if you want a copy of my book, just email me, mike at orderflows.com, subject line, send me your book, and I'll send it to you. So 
again, you know, it's, it's all about taking action in life. You know, whether you want to or not, it's up to you. Um, I, I can't put a gun to your head and say, you know, buy this or learn how to trade order flow. But if you really want to learn how to trade, I believe order flow will help you. So thanks, Renee. Um, I, th I think I may have gone over a minute or two, but hopefully not. But um, I'll throw it back to you. So thanks, everyone. Again, um, you know, go to my website, orderflows.com slash all in. And, and I hope to see you on the inside.